Hello everyone, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. So today we will continue with the discussion on the first canto, the first chapter, the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's so long, it's still not finished. Alright, so if you have not watched the other videos in the playlist, then please go and watch it. And if you are new to the channel, if not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation, then please approach me through my website. The link is there in the description below. And let's start. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. This is also there in the shloga. <laughs> Alright, so we will recite the first verse again. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadhyasayaton Vayadi Taratas Charthesu Bhigyaswarar Tene Brahmanidayadi Kavaye Muhyanti Yatasuraya Tejo Vadimidam Yadhavini Mayosi Sargomrisha Damna Suena Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Paramadhi Mahi So I'll just give a brief uh, recap paragraph wise whatever is there in the purport we have already discussed it in the previous video okay so now the translation is O oh my lord Sri Krishna son of Vasu Vasudev O oh all pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate upon lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes sustenance destruction I mean creation sustenance and destruction of the material manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. Which is the word which says that he is independent? Yes, Avigya Swarat. Swarat is that word which says. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavaye. Brahma is spiritual knowledge. Adi Kavi is Lord Brahma. Tene Brahma Hrida means you imparted the divine knowledge into the heart of the Adi Kavi Brahma who is the first created living being, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Satyam Param Dhimahi. Okay, so now in the uh, first paragraph, there is a description of Lord Krishna and uh, who is the ultimate uh, controller of all Sarva Karana Karanam as it is said in the Brahma Samhita. So then we have the second uh, second paragraph where it is also mentioned uh, about Vyasdev where why he wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam after uh, feeling unsatisfied when he completed writing all the other Vedic literatures. Then in the third paragraph it is said that there are naturally many questions which people have about who created this universe and how the structure came about. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the perfect answer to all such questions. Everything is there especially the cosmology of the universe is described vividly in the fifth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So then in the next uh, paragraph it is described that uh, the absolute truth is the chief amongst all the personalities how he is superior to Lord Brahma and so many other different personalities and how just like a scientist can produce satellites how he has created the entire universe all these planets so that's what is mentioned and then in the next paragraph it is mentioned that how we should not go to the 10th canto where Lord Krishna's intimate pastimes like the rasa dance with his gopis are there and we should step wise from the first canto reach to till the 10th canto and then it is said about the Gayatri Mantra that uh, we need uh, the Brahman Diksha, Brahman Initiation which is the second initiation. First is the Nam Diksha where the Guru gives you the Mantra and then second is the Brahman Diksha. So Gayatri Mantra's importance is stressed here. Then it is being said here that Srimad Bhagavatam what it is actually. Srimad Bhagavatam is the 
it's actually a description of how God acts actually that's basically what the Bhagavatam is it is his interactions with his devotees that is what the Srimad Bhagavatam is in short <laughs> and then it's said that like there is a mirage in the desert sometimes when you go to the desert and you see from far it seems as if there's water but there's no water actually it's it's only a mirage. So similarly, the reflection of the spiritual world is actually in this material world. And it's said here that real water is somewhere else. Yes, which means that the actual manifestation of reality, which seems to be like in this material world, is actually in the spiritual world. Which means that whatever we see here is simply a reflection. And the original happiness is there in the spiritual world. Okay. So now, let's start again. Srimad Bhagavatam is the narration of the Swarupa of Lord manifested by his internal potency and this potency is distinguished from the external potency which has manifested the cosmic world which is within our experience. Now this means that the internal potency of Lord is being explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Internal potency means the core spirituality which is there, I mean, which is there inside God actually it's not inside or out it's god himself so his inner spiritual nature is being described because he's also a person so how he interacts with uh, dhruva maharaj how he interacts with prithu maharaj how he interacts with hanuman everything is described here yes that's the internal potency and this is distinguished from the external potency which has manifested the cosmic world which we see here around the external uh, potency which is known as Bahiranga Shakti, which is this material world, you and me seeing each other. And the internal potency is known as Antaranga Shakti. So, Bhagavatam is basically a description of the Antaranga Shakti of Lord. That is what it is. Now, Srila Vyasdev makes a clear distinction between the two in this shloka. Sri Vyasdev has herein, uh, says herein that the manifested internal potency is real, Antaranga Shakti, and the external manifested energy in the form of material existence is only temporary and illusory like the mirage in the desert we already discussed about it in the desert mirage is uh, in the desert mirage there is no actual water there is only appearance of, of water real water is somewhere else all right so now let's go to the next uh, uh, paragraph the chief engineer of a complicated construction does not personally take part in the construction. But he knows every nook and corner because everything is done under his direction. He knows everything about the construction both directly and indirectly. Similarly, the personality of Godhead, who is the supreme engineer of the cosmic creation, knows every nook and corner. Although affairs are being carried out by demigods. So basically it's said here that Lord Vishnu knows everything what is there here there <laughs> as kunti marani also says in the prayers which will come in the first candle that alaksham sarva bhutanam antar bahir avasthitam you are inside and out antar bahir avasthitam so that's what kunti marani says so basically it said here that Lord Vishnu may not directly take part in making a building or making a planet that he does through the demigods which are there who, for example Brahma, Indra, Chandra, Varuna and all these people but indirectly he is totally conscious of whatever is going on in this material world just like a chief engineer knows everything directly or indirectly. Beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, no one is independent in the material creation. The hand of the Lord is seen everywhere. All material elements as well as spiritual sparks emanate from him only. And whatever is created in the material world is but the interaction of the two energies, material and spiritual, which emanate from the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead. So it said here that you can always see God's hand everywhere and whatever is there in this world is, a, is the interaction of two energies, material and spiritual. So which means Jada and Chitta. Jada is dead material nature, means there is no life in it and Chitta is spirit which is consciousness. So when the spirit soul wants to enjoy then he or she, that spirit soul gets a material body. There are 8.4 million species, as in Hindi they say, na, yoni. 
<laughs> so depending on his desire he gets the body of a male or a female or a dog or a cat yes so that is why it is said that whatever is seen here is interaction of two energies material and spiritual which which actually emanate from the absolute truth the supreme personality of god is shri krishna a chemist can manufacture water in the chemical laboratory by mixing hydrogen and oxygen but in reality the living entity works in the laboratory under the direction of the supreme lord fantastic this is and the materials with which he works are also supplied by the lord the lord knows everything directly and indirectly and he is cognizant of all minute details wow and he is fully independent abhigya swarat he is compared to a mine of gold and the cosmic creations in so many different forms are compared to objects made from the gold such as gold rings necklaces and so on the gold ring and the gold necklace are qualitatively one with gold in in the mine but quantitatively the gold in the mine is different so uh, the gold mine has a lot of gold quantitatively the quantity is ve- the quantity is very high but in a necklace there is only some amount of gold but the quality is same is the same gold only thing is the amount therefore the absolute truth is simultaneously one and different nothing is absolutely equal with the absolute truth but at the same time nothing is independent of the absolute truth so this means that the living entity is also spirit inside internally the constituent position of the living entity is that he is a spirit soul and the absolute truth is also totally spirit there is nothing material about the absolute truth now this means that the living entity and the absolute truth are same in quality which means they are both spiritual but quantitatively they are very different they are the living entity is very minute and god is all pervading he is supremely powerful he is all in all <laughs> there's a shloka which says something in res- in in respect to this uh, what was that ah nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadati kama this is there in the ishopanishad if i am correct <laughs> so now therefore the absolute truth is simultaneously one and different nothing is absolutely equal with the absolute truth but at the same time nothing is independent of the absolute truth conditioned souls beginning from brahma who engineers the entire universe down to the insignificant ant are all creating but none of them are independent of the supreme lord that means whoever says oh i am doing things myself and i am independent he is foolish because everything see from the first created living entity brahma down to the insignificant ant whatever they may be doing but they are not independent they are doing everything in the jurisdiction of lord vishnu the materialist wrongly thinks that there is no creator other than his own self i should repeat this statement the materialist wrongly thinks that there is no creator other than his own self that is why people said i opened a company i got this i got that <laughs> this is called maya or illusion should i repeat this is called maya or illusion what is illusion define illusion <laughs> the materialist wrongly thinks that there is no creator other than his own self so whenever we think that we are creating something or we are doing something that means we are in maya this is illusion because of his poor fund of knowledge the materialist cannot see beyond the purview of his imperfect senses and thus he thinks that matter automatically takes its own shape without the aid of a superior intelligence fantastic this is because of his poor fund of knowledge he cannot see beyond his imperfect senses which means why why are the senses called imperfect because suppose i am seeing something in the desert it may be a mirage yes it's not necessary that it's water so similarly you will notice that sometimes you will see something from very far and you think oh maybe this is that but when you go near you see oh this is something different <laughs> and then sometimes when you hear some somebody's voice then you may feel oh was it this person but then later on somebody tells no it's me it's not he or she yeah so the senses are always imperfect not all the time but many a times they are imperfect which means that our ability to take inference through these materialistic senses they are 
they are having this uh, what they say no? they, they they have faults they have flaws that is why they are called imperfect which means there is no 100% guarantee that whatever you are intercepting through the senses is correct 100% there is no guarantee of that because of his poor fund of knowledge the materialist cannot see beyond the purview, purview of his imperfect senses and thus he thinks that matter automatically takes its own shape without the aid of a superior intelligence so the materialistic person thinks oh everything i am doing and there is no superior intelligence that is what atheists and many scientists say that oh the universe is functioning automatically there is no need of god i mean god exists or not that is a secondary thing they say that there is no need of god only why 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 is there a need of a person called god anyways everything is happening automatically now this is refuted in the shloka by shila vyasdev since the complete whole or the absolute truth is the source of everything nothing can be independent of the body of the absolute truth whatever happens to the body quickly becomes known to the embodied wow similarly the creation is the body of the absolute whole therefore the absolute knows everything directly and indirectly that happens in the creation so see it's written here that whatever happens to the body quickly becomes known to the embodied so suppose you are feeling a pain in your body in one part suppose your leg is paining then you will come to know about it right so this absolute the absolute truth knows everything because this creation is like his body so he directly or indirectly knows everything that happens in his creation and which part does this is this said that he is independent abhigya swarat that is the uh, word where this is said now in the shruti mantra it is also stated that the absolute whole or brahman is the ultimate source of everything everything emanates from him and everything is maintained by him and at the end everything enters into him wow this is the law of nature in the smriti mantra the same is confirmed it is that the it is said that the source from which everything emanates at the beginning of brahma's millennium and the reservoir to which everything ultimately enters is the absolute truth or brahman now there is a description of time here yes about brahma's day and night so we will discuss about that later that's a very long topic so there are two things mentioned here the shruti mantra and the smriti mantra Shru, what is the difference between shruti and smriti shruti refers to shruti means to hear okay oral reception which means that shruti refers to those part of the scriptures which are directly heard from a divine source like god has said something to the sages and then they have written it down it's directly heard and smriti is referring to the other parts of the scriptures where people have given their own realizations yes great sages have given their own realizations now bhagavad gita is directly spoken by god and the mahabharat is uh, the mahabharat has the gita yes we all know that the bhagavad gita is inside the mahabharat so gita is the shruti which is there within the mahabharat now everything emanates from him and everything that is maintained by him now it said here that there are times like lord brahma's day it's written here say beginning of brahma's millennium and then reservoir at the end everything enters to the absolute truth so there's description of lord brahma's day which is known as kalpa one day of brahma which is a very long topic we'll discuss it some other time it is there in the bhagavatam it's coming everything is on the list don't worry material scientists take it for granted that the ultimate source of the planetary system is the sun but they are unable to explain the source of the sun here in the ultimate source is explained according to the vedic literatures brahma who may be compared to the sun is not the ultimate creator it is stated in the shloka that brahma was taught the vedic knowledge by the supreme personality of god it one may argue that brahma being the original living being could not be inspired because there was no other living being at that time herein it is stated that the supreme lord inspired by the secondary inspired the secondary creator brahma in order that brahma could carry out his creative function so what happened was when brahma ji was created from the navel all these things are there in the future in the bhagavatam okay so just hear it and forget it you will anyways encounter it later so what happened was when vishnu had created brahma 
then brahma ji got up and he saw everything was dark and then he was confused what to do it's like there's nothing and then what to do yes so then he started praying and then he heard two words tapa tapa these two syllable words he heard and then he started doing penance tapasya so that is being said here that the supreme lord inspired the secondary creator brahma in order that brahma could carry out his creative function so brahma ji did not know what to do but lord vishnu inspired him to do things so the supreme intelligence behind all creations is the absolute godhead shri krishna in bhagavad gita lord shri krishna states that it is he only who superintends the creative energy prakriti prakrite kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvacha which constitutes the totality of matter therefore shri vyas dev does not worship brahma but the supreme lord who guides brahma in his creative activities in this shloka the particular words abhigya and swarat are significant these two words distinguish the supreme lord from all other living entities no other living entity is abhigya or either abhigya or swarat there that is no one is either fully cognizant or fully independent so swarat means fully independent abhigya means who is knower of everything fully cognizant so these are the two things which differentiate a living entity like you and me from god that is no one is either fully cognizant or fully independent even brahma has to meditate upon the supreme lord in order to create then what to speak of great scientists like einstein the brains of such a scientist are certainly not the products of any human being scientists cannot manufacture such a brain what to speak of foolish atheists who defy the authority of the lord even mayavadi impersonalists who flatter themselves that they can become one with the lord are neither abhigya nor swarat so it said here that Uh, whoever proclaims that we can make a brain like this <coughs> yes it's impossible because it's ultimately coming from god so and then there are people who say that we will go and become one with god that is also not correct such impersonalists undergo severe austerities to acquire knowledge to become one with the lord but ultimately they become dependent on some rich disciple who supplies them with food uh, sorry with money to build monasteries and temples atheists like ravana or hirna kashyapu had to undergo severe penances before they could flout the authority of the lord but ultimately they were rendered helpless and could not save themselves when the lord appeared before them as cruel death this is also the case with the modern atheists who dare to flout the authority of the lord all right so i think i would stop here it's quite long already so we discussed here about how god is independent and how he is abhigya these two words abhigya and swarat and what's the difference between god and the living entities that their inner core is same qualitatively they are the same but quantitatively they are not the same all right and whoever says that uh, i am independent i am doing all things myself that person is in maya which is illusion all right so there you go next verse i don't know when it will come my god this verse is itself so long okay so hopefully in the next video we will finish this verse all right so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and if you are interested in reading this and then also sharing it then please share this video and if you like this video click the thumbs up okay until next time wish you good luck see you bye bye